All right, dudes, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna set about putting some squash and stretch on this ball. So, so far, if you've been sticking with the, the exercise, we've got the ball dropping out of the sky and it's got a nice curve to each of the uh, keyframes so that it's hanging in the air and it's pinging back up. But what we're gonna do now is add a bit more cartooniness to it with some squash and stretch. So in order to do that, we just need to get hold of a different manipulator. Wrong view. So, we're gonna do the squash and stretch with this manipulator. So this is called Control Top. So I'm going into my perspective view just to get it selected, and then I'm gonna go straight back into my side view because this is where all the magic's gonna happen. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is on frame one, I just want to set this keyframe as it is. It's a perfectly round ball at frame one. There you go, that's round. Uh, and that's how I want it to stay. So I'm gonna press S on my keyboard to keep that state. And now what I want to do is stretch it out, that's stretching, um, on the keyframe just before it hits the floor. So that should be frame nine, which it is. And what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna stretch the ball by about 0.4, that'll do it. And that's just before it hits the ground. And then I'm gonna press S. So you can see that as the ball nears the ground, as it's picking up speed, it gets a bit more stretched, which is kind of a very cartoony convention. Uh, and then frame 10, the following frame, when it hits the ground, we're just gonna squash it down a little bit. And I'm gonna squash it by about the same amount that I just stretched it. So that um, the energy that was there is now being kind of spread out. So I'm gonna set that. And now what I'm gonna do uh, I'm going to work a little bit out of sequence here just because I find it easier. I'm now going to go to the top of the next bounce, which is frame 16, I believe. And I'm just going to set the shape of the ball back to normal by putting a zero in the translate Y controller. And then I'm going to set that. And now I'm just going to work backwards. You can see that that looks all kinds of wrong. So in the frame after um, it was squashed, I am just going to stretch it out, but not by as much as it was previously. So I'm going to go to about 0.2, I think. And I'm going to set that. So now what this looks like is it goes into the bounce and we've got a bit of a stretch. It then pings the ground and squashes and then comes back up with a bit more of a stretch just to sort of show the speed that it's going back up with. Now what we do is we repeat this process to or three more times until we've got all the squashes and stretches how we want them, taking a bit off each time. So the next one then needs to be just before it hits the ground again, which is frame 21. And I did about 0.4 last time, so I'm gonna do about 0.2 this time. I'm gonna set that there, and then frame 22 when it hits the ground, minus 0.2-ish. And then the frame after that, I'm gonna do about 0.1, just below perhaps. And then at the top of the next bounce, which is frame 26, set it back to normal and press S. So I'm gonna put a couple more of these squash stretches in and then we'll have a look at the result. Okay, so now that I've put all those in, let's have a look at what it looks like. Lovely. So you can see early on in the animation, the squash and the stretch are quite exaggerated, and then they're toned down as the animation goes on, as the energy kind of dissipates from the ball. Okay, if you've got this far, well done. It's starting to come together, I think you'll agree. So in the next video, we're gonna get this bad boy moving from, um, I don't know how this video is gonna work in the video, from the left to the right, or left to the right, depending on whether or not I flip this video when I put it, when I edit it all together. I'll be uploading a new video in this series each week, so make sure you are subscribed so that you don't miss it. If you need any help, get in touch. You can email me, you can drop a comment below, and I'll see you in the next one.